Roses are red, violets are blue, I have amnesia, and who are you? Get away from me! Uh, let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Thank you for making us a part of your daily routine. What was this episode about again? Oh yeah, amnesia. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. And you. And you. And no, you. No. 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 I didn't, get, I didn't get it. I don't think you should have said you even <laughs> once. <laughs> okay. Uh, amnesia. We're gonna talk about some amazing amnesia stories. When you think about amnesia, you typically think about this vanilla type of amnesia, which is like you wake up one day and you don't know who you are. Period. But that's the simple kind of amnesia. We're gonna be talking about a couple of different instances of amnesia that are a little bit more extraordinary and interesting than that. Shall we? Boop -a boop. We did should. You, did you? Well, go you. Boop -a boop boop. Uh, our first extraordinary case of amnesia is uh, gonna start with a little story. Imagine it's a normal day in September of 2006. Jeff Ingram. I remember where I was doing. <laughs> I remember where I was doing. <laughs> what? Montana. I don't know. Forget Sorry. about it because it Forget doesn't I matter. I said anything. Let's focus on Jeff Ingram. He woke up, uh, said goodbye to his fiance Penny in Washington State, and then he's driving up to Alberta, Canada for mm. a funeral. Oh. Um, a month later, Sad. Penny has neither heard nor seen Jeff. A long funeral. It's been a month. Oh, okay. Until she sees him on the national news calling himself Al. <laughs> uh, it's not like one of those elaborate like marriage proposal things. I disappear for a month and then I. No, they were already engaged. Oh, so uh, okay. he, he blew that opportunity. All right. And plus he had no clue who he was and just decided to call himself Al so that people could at least talk to him. And we're joined now by the man being called Al. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Al, you're wearing that same baseball hat that you were wearing when you were when you came to on the streets. Why, first of all, why are we calling you Al? Where did that name come from? Uh, it came from Alpha 74 is what they were calling me at, at the hospital. Alpha 74, and you thought Al might be a little better. Uh, yeah, just a little bit more here. Uh, he woke up, it turns out, a few days after beginning his uh, trip up to Alberta in Denver, not knowing anything about himself or his past, uh, he was struck with amnesia. Uh, but Jeff, as it turns out, had a rare case of amnesia called disassociative fugue, oh. which is like, you've, heard, very, you've yeah. heard of like a fugue state. Disassociative fugue. This, fugue. A dissociative fugue is basically um, when you hit the reset button on all on your life and your memory, and you forget everything. It's amnesia, but it can happen again and again and again. Ooh, it recurs. That's rough. It's like every few days I go over to your house to your router, and I find that little reset button where I've got to like straighten out a paper clip. Do you do this at my I, house? I just do it, and you don't know when I'm going to come over and straighten out that paper clip and. But that usually solves all the router's problems. I've always got that paper clip ready to go. I've got one taped on the back but, of the router. But you have to reset the password and you no mm. longer have any of your search yeah, history. My, mine's free for every all the neighbors. I do it for the neighbors. Do you get my point though? Yeah, yeah, but a router is not a person, but I do get your point. This was not his first uh, time being struck with amnesia. It was his second time, which again, makes it dissociative fugue. His second fugue. Back in 1994, uh, he went into a grocery store in Alberta uh, went missing for nine months and then wakes up in a Seattle hospital not knowing anything about himself. Not, all of his jeff dumb was gone and he had to- I've lost it. my jeff -dom. He wouldn't so, even know they say that because he doesn't know he's Jeff. Right, I guess family members kind of filled him in and he started over and then he meets Penny in 2003 and of course he had to make a decision to explain to her as they're falling in love that hey, I you know, I had this amnesia thing. Yeah, I've got this thing that could in my totally past. really shake everything up. I don't know if he knew that he was a ticking time bomb of dissociative fugueness, oh. that he might lose his Jeffdom again. Right. Uh, but lo and behold, that's what happened. Uh, Penny, you know, reunites with him uh, based on being on the national news. And then it's just then the question is, well, they were engaged. Jeff knows nothing for the second time in his life, uh, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna get married? No, man. They have to fall in love all over again. 
But you know what? That's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. I mean, I you know what? I'm not saying I would want this, but that is a, one of the benefits. Sometimes my wife and I go on a date and we're like, let's act like it's our first date again. That's cute. And I'm like, we're not at the outback. <laughs> but there's not the risk. But, I mean, you know, th there was a risk here because he hated green peppers and turnips before, but then in his second Jeffdom, he loved them. Which proves so, that it's all in your mind. Okay. It's all in your mind, Jeff, and, and everyone else. He loved Penny, so then now in this reboot, what's gonna happen with Penny? But uh, just, to, just to skip ahead here, just a few weeks later, he does repropose. Oh, it doesn't take long to re-fall in love once you've done it once. Now he, sa he said that his heart had a sense of this was, he was already this in love. This feels right, she it's, seems like a stranger. But he asked Penny's mother to. She's telling me all these things <laughs> that seem Cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About me. She likes green peppers. She loves me. And now I do. Uh, he, Jeff asked uh, his mom, uh, her mom's permission, and then her mom was like, I already told you yes. No. Oh. And uh, they was, got. That was rude. They got married on New Year's Eve in 2006. Was in a disassociative fugue, mom. Uh, so they made, the, they made the wedding New Year's Eve so they could remember the date. Now, it happened again in 2007. I can't find out many things about that, but. Um, you can only imagine how uh, it went, you know? I mean, the same me, the same few weeks. You're like you're married, yeah. Let's let's work it out. Once you, know? you get married, you can reset as much as you want. It's yeah. the same old well, tune. That's a great segue into uh, my story, uh, Link, because I'm going to tell you about Michelle Philpotts. Tell me about her. Is it F W -E L Potts? It is like just, she touches. It's pots. like Phil Potts. It's like a man named Phil who pots. Okay, yeah, he does. He pots things. Right, right. Uh, she was in a motorcycle accident in 1985 and then a car accident in 1990 and she suffered significant brain injuries and they- Both times? <clears throat> well, basically it was a culmination of these injuries and the brain damage that she experienced and then she went through the, a crazy stage where she had epilepsy and then she had to get surgery to get the seizures to stop but everything added up to, in 1994, she developed something called enterograde amnesia Okay. Which means that she is incapable of forming new memories. She cannot form new memories. So, so in her not, mind. So she didn't lose the past. She has she couldn't everything build a future. up until 1994, but nothing moving forward. So mm -hmm. every morning when she wakes up, in her world, it is 1994. To put that into perspective, Forrest Gump is still in theaters. The Lion King is still in theaters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes, what I think thank of. you for that. When she goes to the internet, she opens up Netscape, which doesn't exist on the computer that she's, she's visiting. She's very confused. That's what 1994 was like. Every it was all about the Lion King and Netscape. So what's her day-to-day -day life? Okay, I well, mean, every day she wakes up, the mental slate is wiped clean. Now, she has functional day-to-day, -day, uh, like, life skills memory. Like, she knows how to brush her teeth. She hasn't forgotten okay. that kind motor of Motor skills, motor memory, she's got that. But she can't form new social memories. This makes it kind of weird. So she wakes up. She has developed a system of post-it notes where she rebuilds her memories every single day. And this is an ironic thing. So she had, she was, this article was written about her and they took a picture of her, you can see it here, of her next to her post-it notes. And she's like posing like, oh, this really sucks. You know, like, and you gotta think, the day that she had this article written about her, this was all new to her. The fact that she had this disorder, the fact that she's got the post-it notes and like, oh, and today you're getting an article written about you and now pose for the photo. I just think about what was going through her mind. And what about relationally? Well, she's not in this alone. So she wakes up every single day next to her husband, but she thinks of him as her boyfriend because before 1994, they were just Dating. boyfriend and girlfriend and then they got married in 1997. Don't ask me how they, the marriage happened in the midst of this state, but it happened, okay? So, but what he does is every single morning he wakes up and he's like, I'm not just your boyfriend, I'm your husband. Here's our wedding pictures. He has the wedding album next to the bed, opens it up. So he has to explain this haircut every single day of his <laughs> life. They spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on that alone, I'm oh, sure. Man. He also explains that he's a fencer, and I don't know if that means he's a fencer with the swords or a fencer like he makes, he puts fences up. Or he just says mean things to people. Is that a fencer? Oh, yeah. he's a fencer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> got it. <laughs> so you might be thinking. Uh, he this, could tell her anything. He could reinvent everything if he's a cruel jerk, he if he's an offenser. He can't change that haircut though because it's in the wedding album. It's offensive. Uh, now you might be thinking this is like the movie Groundhog Day where Bill Murray relives the same exact day over and it's over again. It's the inverse of that. But it's not like that. It's actually more like 51st States, which incidentally in that movie, Drew Barrymore woke up and had to rebuild her memories every single day. And that movie is based on Michelle. 
And I aspire to be a cooler person, so I say this is like memento, where instead of post-it notes, he tattooed his whole arm with everything he needed to know every morning when he got up. Right, she doesn't have any tattoos as far as I can tell. Post-it but notes. The really crazy thing is that this sounds very torturous to me, I mean, even for the husband too, every single morning he's like, I gotta have to explain the mullet again, but right. she says that she has a happy life. Of course, she says that every day and it's like a new thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got a happy life, quit asking me that. But She wouldn't say quit asking me. She was like, yeah. She would be like, Thanks for that's asking a good me that. question. Right, but so. Now it, that I think about but it. But anyway, what, the day that she decided to wake up and experience every single day is a good day to her. She's a happy person, so congratulations, Michelle. I'm sure hmm. you won't remember that, but. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I mean, it, it, there's, there's a harsh reality to this thing. We're kind of making light of it, but, but yeah, it is, I mean, gotta, it's, a, it's extremely fascinating. You gotta see the bright side. And I'm glad that she is happy. Yes. She's found happiness. Now, there's another amazing story about this dude named David Stewart McLean uh, that we just wanna briefly touch on. He got amnesia by taking malaria medication. He wakes up in India knows not who he is and has to rebuild his entire life and he wrote an, an entire book about it. An entire it. book! <laughs> uh, and that book is called The Answer to the Riddle is Me and it is available over at audible.com and we got a special deal for you mythical beast. You go over there and you use our link which is audible.com slash GMM you get a, three, a free 30 day trial and you can pick that book or one of over 180,000 titles to choose from. The link is in the description. Thanks for liking and commenting on this video. You know what time it is. My name is Margaret and I'm from Iceland. And it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this episode. Remember you can go to audible.com slash GMM. And please do, click through to Good Mythical More. Uh, we've got another amazing amnesia story, a guy named Clive who lost all of his memories and also cannot create new ones. Oh, gosh. Link thinks Rhett's hand is an adorable guinea pig. <laughs> oh, goodness, Rhett. <laughs> so adorable. My hand? Yeah. Can I touch it? Well, that's, sure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's breathing on me. I just Eskimo kissed uh, my hand. What? That's my hand. Oh, you can't feel the clamminess? You should probably shave it. This is a three minute interview. His short term memory goes from anywhere from seven to 30 seconds. So that means that he realized he was in this interview like 10 times. 